some of my clients and I have been talking about self-compassion and self-love a lot lately. It's Dr. Ginny here. And yeah, that was a big issue for me. I have to say, you know, as my weight was going up and my health was going down and my future was really shrinking. Um, the, and the way I was eating and drinking felt a bit out of control and like it was really um, taking my health down and, and like I couldn't change it. I couldn't stop it. I didn't know what to do and what I thought I should do. I wasn't feeling able to do. So I was beating myself up a lot. And I had to start finding some self-love and self-compassion just to give myself the energy and even the, the neurochemical space to be able to kind of fight my way out, out from under what I, you know, kind of the pile of stuff that I felt was on top of me. And I'm talking with a number of my clients about this right now, because when you get to a point where you're really down, you're really discouraged, you feel like nothing works, nothing's ever going to work, and I'm just going to live uh, a worse and worse life. That's exactly how I felt. Like I say, my future was just shrinking. I got to the point where I couldn't even walk for 10 minutes anymore. And that was sort of a turning point for me where I felt like my life is over. If I am 55 years old, can't even take a 10 minute walk anymore to for fun and relaxation like where where do I go from here other than downhill and I started working in nursing homes and I could really see I'm ended up in a nursing home in my 60s if I don't find a way out of this which was scary because I didn't I had tried a bunch of things and I just felt like nothing works to change my eating and my drinking and my health and how I feel you know I just felt lousy. I felt really lousy um, and really kind of out of control. Like, why can't I turn this around? So I was doing a lot of that. Why am I doing this? Why can't I stop? It was a way of beating myself up. And I needed to stop that if I was going to get the energy and the courage to fight to get my life back, right? Um, I ended up feeling like I need to be a warrior for my health. Like I'm not in a nursing home yet. So in order to prevent myself from landing there and living there way too early, just losing my independence, losing my health, losing my car, my house, all my stuff, right? My ability to have my own dog. I mean, I don't want that life. I don't want to lose all that earlier than I have to. And I could see I have to change my eating and drinking to get that stuff back. So I had to find some self-love. And um, boy, once you change your eating and drinking, you're really giving your body what it needs to feel nourished for, you know, the life-giving kind of nutrition that makes your cells go, okay, we're happy. Let's do something. Let's go do something totally different from how I was feeling for years. Now I feel like that all the time. I remember it used to be really hard to get out of bed. I just didn't, I didn't look forward to the day. I felt like I needed to stay in bed and somehow get some kind of nourishment from that, that I hadn't gotten. I wasn't sleeping well at all. Um, until I figured out and just got really committed, I really need to change my eating and drinking no matter what. I need to I need to do whatever it takes until I got really committed and started being kinder to myself in the process. I wasn't going to have a breakthrough. So why do we need to be kind to ourselves in the process? It's partly because of what happens for us neurochemically when we beat ourselves up or when someone else beats us up. Maybe we beat someone up thinking, you know, I got to make you stop drinking. And I got to tell you how stupid it is and how you're going to lose everything. And I'm not going to love you anymore if you don't stop drinking, etc. We feel we have a lot of belief that we need to beat somebody up to get them to stop doing a bad habit or to get them to take it seriously that they need to change their eating or lose weight, et cetera. We have that idea very fixed in our society in a lot of ways, but it is absolutely wrong. And I grew up with this idea that I must beat myself up when I'm misbehaving. When I need to make a change, I have to tell myself how wrong and stupid I am so that I'll feel bad enough that it will make me change. Um, that I'll, but that I'll go, oh, this is terrible. I've got to change this. But feeling really bad 
getting a release of cortisol in your brain about, oh my gosh, we're in, da we're in danger, this is terrible. That just makes us wanna eat more, makes us wanna drink more. It does not help motivate us. Um, having that release of cortisol really shrinks the field for us, really makes us go into survival mode, just stay on track, just survive, just keep going, just eat that, just drink that. That's what beating ourselves up or beating each other up does to in our brain and to our ability to change. It makes it harder. It makes it way harder. We really need to create a biochemical space within our body where we have some energy, where we have some courage. We need some courage and some belief. I can do this. I believe I can fight my way out of this. So how do you find that courage? How do you find the strength within yourself? I remember how incredibly depleted and discouraged I felt, how much I felt like a failure, how much I felt like nothing works. I've tried a whole bunch of things and nothing works. Something is fundamentally wrong with me. That's how I felt. Like I am a loser. And as long as I indulged in speaking to myself that way, uh, I, I felt worse and worse and worse. And I felt more and more driven to the food and the drink. So I had to really change it. So how do you start to find the self-love to give yourself compassion? We need the compassion because it gives us um, the biochemical space, the neurochemical space to feel like we can open the field, we can learn, we can grow, we can try, we can fight, et cetera. Just to feel that we need something more like, uh, you know, a healthy level of dopamine in our system, a good functioning dopamine system, which we don't have in a, in a space of addiction. Um, we can, what we can do though, neurochemically is give ourselves oxytocin. Oxytocin is the chem the hormone that we, that gets released in our bodies when we nurse from our mothers, right? It's even in cow's milk when we drink cow's milk, get a bit of oxytocin. I stay away from dairy though. I don't know that for a lot of us, it's not good for our gut, but we can give ourselves oxytocin by giving ourselves a hug, by talking to ourselves kindly. You're okay. I know you ate off the plan today. You ate stuff you didn't mean, mean to eat, but we love you. You're, you're still a lovable person. This is not that surprising. You're going to find a way out of this. Let's, let's look for some solutions. We can actually do that, look for solutions when we've got some oxytocin in our system. If I were living with someone right now, I would institute um, twice a day, two minute hugs. That will absolutely change your brain chemistry and give you like a feeling of well being that is from within your own body. That's why I can do it for myself too. Ginny, I love you. You're doing all right. You're, you're fighting this. You're going to win. I believe in you. I've seen you overcome things before. So reminding yourself of times when you overcame something difficult, you could go look through every 10, every 10 years, you know, from one to 10. What's something I overcame that was harder than I thought I could get through, but I did. And from 10 to 20, What's one thing that I, I was really successful at or one thing I was really good at? Like I can remember really enjoying playing basketball or playing clarinet and it started out really hard and I wasn't good at it, but I kept going and going and going and going until I really got some skill with it and it was fun. It was getting more and more fun. Um, then what about from 20 to 30? You know, what's something that you won over? in that age. Look for the times that you used some kind of strength, some kind of talent or some kind of strength that you have to win something, to overcome something. It doesn't have to be that you beat somebody else exactly, but that you had a challenge in front of you that you weren't sure you could, you could win over and you did. You could go through every 10 years of your life and find some of those that reveal your talents, that reveal your strengths, your ability to overcome. Just reminding yourself of those times um, will help you remember, oh yeah, I have these things within. I may not have seen them lately. I may not have used them to overcome what's in front of me right now, 
Um, but I can, I can draw on those. Just start building a bank of strengths, uh, something that you're good at, something that you've done, right? Um, you know, practicing self-care, being active about, like one of the things I started really working on when I, I knew I needed to change my eating, I got a coach. I recommend getting a coach, right? This is why I coach people, why I help people with this. I got a coach to help me for the first year of really trying to change my eating. And what I really learned from her uh, was to really be very intentional about eating more and more and more nutritious, life-giving foods. You know, um, when in our current food environment where 80% of the food in the grocery store has sugar added, it can really mess with our taste buds and it can really mess with our hormone systems and our metabolism and how everything in our body functions. It, it really makes it harder. It makes it harder to enjoy the nutritious foods that our body really needs. So I really spent a year in coaching working at finding nutritious foods that I could really enjoy. And now every day I eat an abundance of highly nutritious foods. It gave me so much energy back. It gave me so much life back and it put my body in a position to start to be willing to release the excess weight. And I started feeling so much better. I mean, I feel better now than I felt for the past 20 years before I changed my eating. And it really started with um, putting the effort in to find and uh, in eat more of the highly nutritious foods that make such a difference. So what other, you can work on that. It will make a huge, huge difference. And it can be a project. It can take some time. You're going to have to be compassionate with yourself as you go through it, because the world has been convincing you, convincing your brain that the best things to eat are the things that are non-nutritious, that are cravingful, that are highly processed, maybe not even food. You could call them food-like substances. It's very easy for your brain to get convinced of this in this food environment and the food environment we live in, where the most highly profitable foods, the ones that are marketed all the time with um, just a little won't hurt you are often the worst for us and often are addictive and cravingful. And we want more and more and more of these things that really don't give us any nutrition and really mess with our organs and the functioning of our bodies. And, you know, all those things, our metabolism, et cetera. So look for ways to be quite intentional about self-care uh, in ways that matter. You know, I had to really work at my sleep for a while. My, um, my sleep got way better when I changed my eating and drinking, but I also had to do some sleep hygiene work. Uh, now I sleep well almost every night, pretty much every night. I have a really good night's sleep. I fall asleep really easily. I wake up about about eight hours later, um, feeling good. It's, I don't have any trouble getting out of bed anymore. Like my whole sleep has completely rehabilitated. Um, and that was a bit of an effort at first, Chain, stopping drinking, um, stopping some of the other cravingful things that spike your sugar. Um, that made a huge difference. Eating enough of the nutritious foods made a huge difference, et cetera. Um, what other kinds of self-care things will really help you see, I take care of myself. I care about myself. I love myself. It's taking action that will really convince you that you love yourself. Saying kind things can really make a difference. Really letting go of beating yourself up instead saying, oh, shoot, that didn't turn out the way you wanted. You feel like beating yourself up, but I love you. <laughs> we'll, we'll find some solution to this. Um, will be much more helpful. Setting boundaries, I'm looking at some notes over here. Setting boundaries is a very important way to love yourself. You know, I'm the kind of person that give, 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 and then ends up feeling depleted and resentful and miserable. Um, I have to have some boundaries. I have to have times that I don't spend, that I uh, have time alone to rejuvenate. I have to have time to go for walks. I have to have time with my pets. Um, I have to really limit the uh, giving access to people who are really negative and who tear me down, et cetera really need to have boundaries. There's no excuse 
uh, for letting go of all the boundaries and just letting all kinds of crap come in. Uh, we just cannot afford to indulge in that. It will tear us down and then we'll have nothing to give anyone else and we won't have a life we enjoy. So we really need to set boundaries. Getting more mindful, more clear and intentional about how we wanna live and what are the habits and practices that lead us there. And part of this um, uh, can be about figuring out there's, you know, the things that are the most in the moment pleasurable are sometimes the things that lead to a life that I don't really wanna live. So really distinguishing between pleasure and happiness. You know, having the happy, active, full life I want to live means saying no to some of the short-term pleasures sometimes, right? Uh, I never was willing to try things like heroin. It seemed like a really, really risky, dangerous thing. I had a friend, uh, a father of a friend tell me once he had taken up heroin um, associated with the Vietnam War. And he said, here's the thing about heroin. Once you've tried it, everything in life is gray compared to using heroin. Yuck. Yeah, I'm so glad I never tried that. But sugar and alcohol, uh, things like that, were my fallback quick pleasure. Oh, I'm going to get a burst of pleasure from that. Um, if you ever have had to go on uh, an opiate after a surgery, you might find that, wow, that feels good, right? I, or I use nitrous oxide at the dentist. It's that quick Oh, that, that kind of quick pleasure that feels like a high, uh, the, those are dangerous levels of pleasure. Those are addictive levels of pleasure that our body then starts to try to compensate for to get homeostasis. So really kind of, for me, finding a way to get pleasures that are in a more moderate range, like taking a walk or petting the dog, these are these release dopamine, they are pleasurable, but they're not a level of pleasure that's like a high that's going to cause an addictive response and cause suffering. So um, starting to choose between the things that will give you longer term happiness, uh, as opposed to the things that give short term pleasure, uh, especially excess pleasure. Um, forgive yourself is also a step for self-love, for showing yourself self-love. Beating yourself up, it's not helpful. It's not going to help you make the changes you want to make. It's actually going to make the changes harder. It's just healthier to forgive yourself for, like, I mean, I found myself drinking a bottle of wine every day, even the days that I said, I'm not going to drink tonight. I'm just going to eat healthy. And then I would end up drinking. And I felt so ashamed and embarrassed and like so out of integrity with myself that it tended to make me beat myself up. What's wrong with you? You have integrity with whatever you promise to everyone else, but no integrity with yourself. Um, I really wanted to forgive myself for that. And I really also wanted to fix it. I really, it helped me to have a goal of being in better integrity with myself. So really the way to get out of entropy, out of this state of, I can't get anywhere, I can't get any motion going, I'm just stuck, which feels so awful. The way out of entropy is intention, you know, being clear, this is my intention. So for me, one intention was, I only put good, healthy, life-giving foods and drinks into my body to become a part of my body and who I am. I live in integrity. These were some of my intentions. And it was a bit of a fight to get there, but that intention helped me with the fight. It helped me um, have the energy and the courage to go forward with making the changes that now are so, you know, easy and effortless in my life that have really given me, I don't know, I feel better than I felt 20 years ago. You get that with intention and self-love and self-compassion and self-care, uh, right? It really is necessary to find the ways to treat yourself with self-care and self-love. So it will really make a positive difference just to start uh, showing even 1%, 10% more self-love and self-compassion. Find a couple of these actions that I suggested and just start doing them, even though at first it might feel hard, it might feel like I don't have time for that, that's stupid, et cetera. I feel like any good habit you're trying to establish, you're gonna get some of that. That comes from this part of the brain that wants to maintain the status quo. Let's just 
do what we did yesterday. Nobody died, you know, sat on the couch eating bonbons and crying and drinking wine all day. Uh, but it was good. Let's do it every day. You know, this part of the brain is the more intentional, goal directed, more human, evolved part of the brain. When you think of yourself, that's more what you're thinking of. So, slowing things down, giving yourself more time, telling that part, I hear you. Uh, but you're not in charge of me. You're not the boss of me. And I am going to do one thing today to show myself self-love. And I'm going to do one thing tomorrow. And every single day this week, I'm going to do one thing to show myself more self-love and self-compassion because I need it to have the courage and the energy to make my life what I want it to be. It's not happening by accident anymore. I'm in a state of entropy and to break out of that, I've got to start showing myself some self-love and self-compassion. Does that make sense? I'd love to hear your thoughts about it. All right, talk to you soon.